بالحسن مبدلا غيرك لا إله إلا أنت ظلمت سبحانك وبحمدك ظلمت نفسي ظلمت نفسي ظلمت نفسي وتجرأت بجني وسكنت إلى قديم ذكرك لي ومنك علي اللهم مولاي كم من قبيح سترت وكم من فادح من البلاء أقلت وكم من عثار وقيت وكم من مكروه دفعت وكم من ثناء جميل لست أملا له نشرت اللهم أعظم بلائي وأفرط بي سوء حالي وقصرت بي أعمالي وقعدت بي أغلالي وحبسني عن نفعي بعد آمالي وخدعتني الدنيا بغرورها ونفسي بخنا بخيانتها ومطالي يا سيدي فاسألك بعزتك أن لا يحجب عنك دعائي سوء عملي وفعالي ولا تفضحني بخفي ما اطلعت عليه من سري ولا تعاجلني بالعقوبة على ما عملته في خلواتي من سوء فعلي وإساءتي ودوام تفريطي وجهالتي وكثرتي شهواتي وغفلتي وكن اللهم بعزتك لي في الأحوال كلها رؤوفا وعلي في جميع الأمور عطوفا إلهي وربي من لي غيرك أسأله كشف ضري والنظر في أمري إلهي ومولاي أجريت علي حكما اتبعت فيه وهو نفسي ولم أحترس في من تزين عدوي فغرني بما أهوى وأسعده على ذلك القضاء تجاوزت بما جرى علي من ذلك بعض حدودك وخالفت بعض أوامرك فلك الحجة علي في جميع ذلك ولا حجة لي فيما جرى علي فيه قضاءك وألزمني حكمك وبلاءك وقد أتيتك يا إلهي بعد تقصيري وإسرافي على نفسي معتذرا نادما منكسرا مستقيلا مستغفرا منيرا 
مذعنا معترفا لا أجد مفرعا مما كان مني ولا مفزعا أتوجه إليه في أمري غير قبولك عذري وإدخالك إياي في سعة من رحمتك اللهم فاقبل عذري وارحم شدة ضري وفكني من شدي وثاقي يا رب ارحم ضعف بدني ورقة جلدي ودقة عظمي يا من بدا خلقي وذكري وتربيتي وبري وتوذيتي هبني لابتداء كرمك وسار في برك بي يا الهي وسيدي ربي اتراك بعد توحيدك وبعد من طرى علي قلبي من معرفتك ولهج به لساني من ذكرك واعتقده ضميري من حبك وبعد صدق اعترافي ودعائي خاضعا هيهات ان تكرم من ان تضيع من ربيت او تبعد من ادنيت او تشرد من اويت او تسلم الى البلاء من كفيت ورحمت وليت شعري يا سيدي وإلهي ومولاي أتسلط النار على وجوه قرت لعظمتك ساجدا وعلى ألسن نطقت بتوحيدك صادقا وأشاء بشكرك مادحا وعلى قلوب اعترفت بإلهيتك محققا وعلى ضمائر حوت من العلم بك حتى صارت خاشعا وعلى جوارح سعات لا أوطان تعبدك طائعا وأشارت باستغفارك مذعنا ما هكذا ظنوا بك ولا أخبرنا بفضلك عنك يا يا ربي وأنت تعلم ضعفي عن قليل من بلاء الدنيا وعقوباتها وما يجري فيها من المكاره على أهلها على أن ذلك بلاء مكروه قليل مكثور يسير بقاؤه قصير مدته فكيف احتمالي لبلاء الآخرة وجليل وقوع المكاره فيها وهو بلاء تطول مدته ويدوم مقامه ولا يخفف عن أهله 
لأنه لا يكون إلا عن غضبك وانتقامك وسخطك وهذا ما لا تقوم له السماوات والأرض يا سيدي فكيف بي وأنا عبدك الضعيف ذليل الحقير المسكين المستكين يا إلهي وربي وسيدي ومولاي لأي الأمور إليك أشكو ولما منها ضج وبكي لأليم أم لطول البلاء ومدة فلئن صيرتني للعقوبات مع أعدائك وجمعت بيني وبين أهلي بلائك وفرقت بيني وبين أحبائك وأوليائك فهبني يا إلهي وسيدي ومولاي وربي صبرت على وهبني صبرت على حر نارك فكيف أصبر عن النظر إلى كرامتك أم كيف أسكن في النار ورجائي عفوك فبعزتك يا سيدي وإلى ومولاي أقسم صادقا لئن تركتني ناطقا لأضجن إليك بين أهلها ضجيج الآملين ولأصرقن إليك صراخ المستصرخين ولأبكين عليك بكاء الفاقدين ولو نادينك أين كنت يا ولي المؤمنين يا غاية أمال العارفين يا غياث المستغيثين يا حبيب قلوب الصادقين ويا إله أفتراك سبحانك يا إلهي وبحمدك تسمع فيها صوت عبد مسلم سجن فيها بمخالفته وذاق طعم عذابها بمعصيته وحبس بين أطباقها بجرمه وجريرته وهو يضج إليك ضجيج معمل لرحمتك ويناديك بلسان لتوحيدك ويتوسل إليك بربوبيتك يا مولاي فكيف يبقى في العذاب وهو يرجو ما سلف من حلمه أم كيف تعلمه النار وهو يعمل فضلك ورحمتك أم كيف يحرقه لهيبها وأنت تسمع صوته وترى مكانه أم كيف يشتمل عليك زفيرها وأنت تعلم ضعفه 
أم كيف يتقلقل بين أطباقها وأنت تعلم صدقا أم كيف تسجر زبانيتها وهو يناديك يا ربا أم كيف يرجو فضلك في عقه منها فتتركه في غار هيهات ما ذلك الظن بك ولا المعروف من فضلك ولا مشبع لما عملت به الموحدين من برك وإحسانك فباليقين أقطع لولا ما حكمت به من تعذيب جاحديك وقضيت به من إخلاد معانديك لجعلت النار كلها بردا وسلاما وما كانت لأحد فيها مقرا ولا مقاما لكنك تقدست أسماءك أقسمت أن تملأها من الكافرين من الجنة والناس أجمعين وأن تخلد فيها الماندين وأن تجل ثناؤك قلت مبتدئا وتطولت بالنعم متكرما أفمن كان مؤمنا كمن كان فاسقا لا يستوون إلهي وسيدي فأسألك بالقدرة التي قدرتها وبالقضية التي حتمتها وحكمتها وغلبت من عليه أجريتها أن تهب لي في هذه الليلة وفي هذه الساعة كل جرم أجرمته وكل ذنب أذنبته وكل قبيح أسررته وكل جهل عملته كتمته أو أعلنته أخفيته أو أظهرته وكل سيئة أمرت بإثباتها الكرام الكاتبين الذين وكلتهم بحفظ ما يكون مني وجعلتهم شهودا علي مع جارحي وكنت أنت الرقيب علي من ورائهم والشاهد لما خفي عنهم وبرحمتك أخفيته وبفضلك سترت وأن توفر حظي من كل خير تنزله أو إحسان تفضله أو بر تنشره أو رزق تبسطه أو ذنب تغفره أو خطأ تستره يا ربي يا ربي يا رب يا ربي يا إلهي وسيدي ومولاي ومالك رقي يا من بيده ناصيتي يا علي من بضري ومسكنتي يا خبيرا بفقري وفاقتي يا ربي يا ربي يا رب يا ربي أسألك بحقك وقدسك وعظم صفاتك وأسمائك 
أن تجعل أوقاتي في الليل والنهار بذكرك معمورا وبخدمتك موصولا وأعمالي عندك مقبولا حتى تكون أعمالي وأورادي كلها وردا واحدا وحالي في خدمتك سرمدا يا يا سيدي يا من عليه معولي يا من إليه شكوت أحوالي يا ربي يا ربي قو على خدمتك جارحي واشدد على العزيمة جانحي وهب لي الجد في خشيتك والدوام في الاتصال بخدمتك حتى أسرح إليك في ميادين السابقين وأسرع إليك في المبادرين وأشتاق إلى قربك في المشتاقين وأدنو منك دلو المخلصين وأخافك مخافة الموقنين وأجتمع في جوارك مع المؤمنين اللهم ومن أرادني بسوء فأريد ومن كادني فكيد واجعلني من أحسن عبيدا أو من أحسن عبيدك نصيبا عندك وأقربهم منزلة منك وأخصهم زلفة لديك فإنه لا ينال ذلك إلا بفضلك وجد لي بجودك واطف علي بمجدك واحفظني برحمتك واجعل لساني بذكرك لهجا وقلبي بحبك متيما ومن علي بحسن اجابتك واقلني عثرتي واغفر زلتي فانك قضيت على عبادك بعبادتك وامرتهم بدعائك وضمنت لهم الاجابه فإليك يا ربي نصبت وجهي وإليك يا ربي مددت يدي فبعزتك استجب لي دعائي وبلغني مناي ولا تقطع من فضلك رجائي واكفني شر الجن والانس من اعدائي يا سريع الرضا اغفر لمن لا يملك الا الدعاء فانك فعال لما تشاء يا من اسمه دواء وذكره شفاء وطاعته غناء ارحم من رأس ماله الرجاء وسلاحه البكاء يا سابغ النعم يا دافع النقام يا نور المستوحشين في الظلام يا عالم لا يعلم صل على محمد وآل محمد وافعل بما أنت أهله وصل اللهم على رسوله والأئمة الميامين من آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا صلوات اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل
صلى على محمد وعلى محمد. Okay, forget this chicken scratch. It's okay. I'm gonna try to do my best. Okay, but I promise I'll have this done in a PowerPoint. I usually put all my stuff in PowerPoint, but this is how my stuff starts out. Okay, so just a lot of thought, then it goes from there. Um, how many of you when you like? Right, just raise your hands. When you listen to the du'a, emotionally you connect. Okay. What type of feelings do you have? Sadness. What is it? Sadness. Sadness. Okay, good. What else? Khushua. What is it? Khushua. Khushua. Tranquility, calmness. What else? Humbleness. Humbleness. Beautiful. Look at these words, okay? What else? What else do you feel? Regret. What is it? Regret. Beautiful. Regret. What else? Reflective. Reflective. Connection. Connection. What else? Give me some more. Spiritual. Spiritual. What else? Sorrow. 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 Can you feel that in your bones, like literally? When you think about that, does the du'a penetrate your heart so deep that it makes you move? It literally makes you move. Do you know why that happens? Because it's a code for your soul. Understand that. It's talking to your principles as a human being. That's what the du'a is there for. The du'a brings you to self-love. It brings you to regret for a reason. Because you've done something against yourself. The lamtu nafsi. When the imam says that, he says to you, you've wronged, I've wronged myself. How do you wrong yourself? Can you hate yourself in order to love something else? Think about that question. Can you hate yourself in order to love something else? You can. Some of us, we fall in love with the wrong things sometimes. We allow the heart to come close. And the heart 
If you bring it close enough, here's the temptation right here. Okay? What happens is the mind needs to lead the heart. And the mind gives it direction. And the temptation is there. And the second, the mind decides to take that direction. The heart will move with it. And they'll get closer. Then you know what happens? When the heart gets close enough, it automatically attaches. That's its job. It doesn't ask for your permission. It doesn't. The heart will attach. That's how it works. So you as a person, if you can help me out with this, please. You have five different relationships. You as a person have five different relationships. These are the things you attach to. Thank you. I appreciate it. Number one, first relationship is with Allah Azawajal. That's your first relationship. Imam Ali alayhi salam, he talks to Allah and he says, Ya Allah, you know me better than I know myself. And I know myself better than other people know me. Three different relationships, just in that hadith. The second relationship is with yourself. The lamtu nafsi. That's a relationship. When you discipline yourself and you tell yourself no, that's you loving yourself. That's a relationship. When you get up and pray, that's you disciplining yourself. You're loving yourself in that way. I care for myself. When I put on the hijab, I'm caring for me. When the guy, a sister's walking, he puts his eyes down, he's caring for himself. That's love, that's literally self-love. That's what that generates. So the more you love yourself, the more you're going towards who? Allah Azza This is so important. Please take this with you. Understand, the minute you move towards temptation, you're going towards self-hate. The more you go towards Allah, you're going towards what? Self-love. Now, the third relationship is with who? Other people. I have a relationship with you, you have a relationship with me. Some of us, we put those relationships first. We care what people say first. I would go against Allah in order to please someone. I would go against myself in order to please someone. I would put other people's opinion of who I am first. That happens. If you don't get this formula right, understand, you're always going to be weak. Your fourth temptation is with nature. Cats, dogs, trees. Without the trees, you can't live. What they breathe out, you need. And what we breathe out, they need. Allah's made you connected, whether you like it or not. You're crippled, whether you like it or not. You think you own so much. Really. Get rid of the trees, what would happen to you? Just the trees alone. What would happen? The fifth relationship is your temptations. Some of us, this is what we love. When that temptation calls, you run towards it. And I'm not talking about you. Maybe there's somebody you know. But the temptation becomes so strong that I long for it. That the shaitan doesn't even need it to say anything to me. I just run into it. There's a hadith that says, 
the shaitan uses many different what? Ropes, chains. Some people are too strong in their personality who they are. They've embedded what? Right here. This is the word. Principle. Their identity is too strong. How do you hate yourself in order to love someone else? When you let go of principle. When you drop principle, let's say you believe in prayer. Word comes out. It's time for you to pray. Principle. You love a significant other. They don't pray. They don't do what they need to do. Guess what? In order to love them, they're trying to pull you away from your own one. Sometimes principles. And you're going to have to sacrifice those things. When you do that, when you sacrifice principle in order to love something else, whatever it may be, money, other people, it doesn't matter. You know what happens? It generates guilt. That generates self-hate. That's how it works. That's how you can hate yourself in order to love someone else. When that guilt hits, you have two options. You can lie to yourself and tell yourself, you know what? It's okay. I made a mistake. You justify how you want. Most people do that. It's okay to smoke that. It's okay to drink this. I don't need the hijab. It's not in the Quran. I justify. And I lie to myself. Because I want to. Because it removes the guilt. Now what happens? Or you can what? Learn how to forgive yourself. Belong to nafsi. The only way to remove self-hate is to go towards what? Self-love. How do you go towards self-love? Go back to Allah's principles. When you go back to Allah's principles, you find the dua what? Soothing. It talks to you. I'm regretful. I've come to you, Ya Allah, in the dua. He says, I've come to you, Ya Allah, regretful, apologetic. That's when the dua starts talking to you. Because it's talking to your soul. Now, let me give you an example of how this works. The first relationship is with Allah. Yusuf was tempted. He was tempted. Zulaikha was known as what? She was one of the prettiest women. I'm telling you, a lot of guys would run to the door to lock it, not to leave it. And it's an epidemic now. I'm sorry. The guys and how they do things now, I'm sorry. It's wrong in so many ways. Get married, you want three, four other relationships on the side. It doesn't work that way. Your temptation has got you know that. That's a regressive aspect of a human being. When we start becoming animalistic, there's a reason for it. It's because we're removing principle. Yusuf, she was in the room, he was in the room. Yusuf has a choice. Do I go towards temptation? Or do I go towards what? Principle. You're tempted. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَقْوَى Whoever fears and remembers his Lord in this state, this is power. This is character. When you start understanding that, that at this point, when I'm tempted, and my heart is going towards what? That temptation. And I tell it, stop. No, you're not moving. I got you. And you step back, 
And you pull on that mental muscle and you say, no, I'm in control. That's power. Now what happens when you do that? What happens to your own self-respect, your dignity, your honor? What happens when you do that? That's what it generates. You know what temptations generate? Humiliation. Self-regret. Sorrow. You know, I watched you going to sujood. And subhanAllah, it's beautiful. Small little gesture, but it's beautiful if your heart is in it. And it touches someone else, it's incredible. So now, what does Yusuf say? It says, whoever fears, meaning state of his Lord, meaning what? He remembers Allah in a state of temptation. And he forbids the self from regressive desire, going towards the wrong thing. Surely heaven is his abode. That's where he will be. Yusuf says, Akhaf Rabbi. He says, I fear Allah. Can you do that when that temptation is moving you closer? That's the battle. Other people will tempt you. Which relationship is the hierarchy on? Which relationship do you hold first? Which one is your heart connected to? Watch this. Imam Ali alayhi salam is the master of this. You know how? He gives us two ahadith. He says, surely heaven is his abode, correct? We're all trying to go up here, for sure. That's heaven, this is hell. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, he says, Allah Azza wa Jal has given the angels intellect with no desire. He's given you the animals desire with, with desire with no intellect. And he's given mankind both. Where do you sit on that chart? You're in between an animal and an angel. The more you go towards your temptation, the more animalistic you will become. That's how you will be. You will literally turn into an animal. <clears throat> and the more you use your intellect, because Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says, whoever's intellect dominates his desires, he will be above the angels. And whoever's intellect is subservient to his desires or her desires, will be beneath the animals. Beneath the animals. You're lower than an animal. And you don't think humanity can get there? Before the Prophet came, they used to bury the infant who was a girl in gender alive. You don't think that's worse than an animal? You live, think about that just for a second. You don't think that's worse than an animal? Humanity without religion, that's where it goes. That's what happens. It's up to you at the end of the day. Because no one is moving with you. So when you resist temptation, what are you doing? You're loving yourself. Some people will come into your life that will make you hate yourself. Why? Because you put the third relationship over what? The first. And sometimes you make decisions when you're by yourself. You put the second relationship over the first relationship. That's what happens. The one who can run the hierarchy and keep his relationships in order and has his heart or her heart aligned with those codes. That my heart doesn't move when it needs to be for Allah. In the first battles, the first battles of Islam, there was sun, 
against father. Why? Why? Because of principle. Imagine looking at your father across. That's principle. I'm in love with my principles more than I'm in love with the temptation. That's the person who loves themselves. That's the person who has true self-care. That's the person who has honor. Can you rip anything in terms of dignity, honor, respect of Imam Hussein alayhi salam? Can you? He passed. He lost the war. Did he really? How many visitors is happening right now? How much dignity does a man like that have? What an honor Allah has given him. Why? Because he followed what? Why? Principle. When you follow principle, you have self-love. When you go away from your principle, you're going towards self-hate. I want you to think right now, and I'll end with this. What's happening with us now? in terms of depression, anxiety, self-hate. What's happening with us? Do you know why? Can you see it? Is it clear? It's clear. Your self-love is not in a pill. It's not. It's already in your own head. Allah's already placed it there. It's already there. Your depression is from you. There's nothing you can take that's just going to make it better. It's not going to happen. Three out of, one out of every three women is, an, is on an anti, I'm not going to forget it. I don't even say it. I swear to you. It just bothers me so much. They're on antidepressants. It's unbelievable what's happening. Do you know why? Because we're going towards what? Where are we going? Are we going here? Or here? How many of you have a better relationship with your phone than other people? Ask yourself. I'm not going to say anything to you. I put phone down there for a reason. That's a person. That's better than a person. That thing will make you feel great all day. You don't need to see anyone for a whole month. People will just sit in their rooms for hours on end. This thing is so good. I swear to you, I have people who I mentor, I coach. And you know what happens? 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24. They don't even know how to conduct the conversation. Because that thing is so good. It's incredible. Take it even worse. People become a distraction to your relationship with that phone. They're a distraction. You tell them, hey, hey, what's going on? Bro, hell out of me, man. Leave me alone. This is how far it's gotten. It's gotten to that level. They're driving, and what's happening? Their thumb is just scrolling. On its own, this thing is alive. Like the thumb is just, it's got its own brain now. This thing is on the judgment day, I swear to you, it's gonna come and it's gonna steer you right in the face. It's gonna say, bro, it's gonna, it's counting minutes for you. How much time you wasted. This thing is going to be your own worst enemy in terms of our generation because Allah says your, your, your extremities will be witnessed against you. This thing is going to take you to hell. It's no longer the tongue anymore because everybody's become quiet because they're by themselves. But this thing, it's the new tongue right here. Where are we going? Well, just ask yourself. I'm just, I'm just saying this stuff so you think. Think about your patterns. Think about the way you do things on a daily level. Check yourself. Check your thoughts. Why is that there? We're becoming as a society, 
as a community, as individuals, more animalistic. We're moving towards the wrong direction. When you remove religion, you remove morality. When you remove morality, guess what happens? You have chaos. That's how it works. With that, just understand. When you were tempted, step back for a second and watch yourself. And on that note, I say this to you. I love all of you, but don't hate me for saying what I've said. I'm just warning you, okay? The person who loves you will tell you what you don't want to hear. If you are moving towards something, understand we're just trying to apply a principle. So hold on to those principles. Imam Ali salam says, if you want people to gravitate towards you as a person, you know what he says? He says, hold on tight to your principles. Don't move and watch what happens. People will love you, but you will learn how to also make enemies and not just friends because now you stand for something. That's what principles do. They draw the lines of your identity. So identify who you are. And don't mix your identity with the wrong identities. And don't mix your principles with the wrong principles of other people. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad. Allahumma salli wa alayhi If there's any questions, anybody wants to make a comment, this is taking me a long time to get together. Okay, and alhamdulillah, like I have, I'm gonna be coming out with a book as well. It's gonna have a lot of stuff in it. It's gonna be called Building Mental Muscle. And I'm honored, I'm honored to be doing this stuff. I just wanna tell you guys just really quickly, like my history with Hassanain and everything. I was just, I was just a normal kid. I didn't know where I was going. I had no idea, no idea. Direction, I, I was just there. I never drank, never smoked, never did. Alhamdulillah, my dad was strong in terms of these kinds of things. But then I went and I get on the bus and I went on this retreat. I don't know why. I can't even remember why. And I look up and I see Hassanin. So the first time I ever saw him, that was like literally almost 20 years ago. And I look up and I'm like, what's this guy doing here? Look, that's my, that was my first thought. Look how ignorant you are. And we get there. I've never been on a retreat before. Things happen and four days go by. And I've never been the same since. Never. I changed. I don't know what happened. I made a promise to myself I was going to go to Hajj. That trip. And now, I'm here. And I remember the first time that I ever spoke. I wasn't I didn't speaking, me? I was only the shyest guy in the world. Me? Speaking? I've been all over the world now. Alhamdulillah. But I remember the first time I started speaking, one of the first times. And it was on a website. And they put my name on the website. So I was going through, I didn't know what time it was I was speaking. So I went to the website. And you know who I see who's speaking the following week? Hassanin. My name is next to his. So you know what I did? Took a snapshot. And I sent it to him. I'm coming after you, bro. But look at that engagement. From the first second I met him, okay, to that moment. And now me and him, alhamdulillah, like I stand next to the guy. But what are you going to do? Like, really think about that. What are you going to do? It's not about me. It doesn't matter. But why don't you take the stage? Why don't you do that? 
And it doesn't have to be the stage of everyone. It's the stage of your own life. Take charge of that. You don't have to say a word. Work towards the inside. Alhamdulillah, I took those chances. The first time I spoke, I was literally in the back of my knees were sweating. I was like, oh my God, what am I saying? Everyone's looking at me. Stop looking at me. Like, you go through things and it's amazing and you graduate level after level after level. And you know where mental strength happens? Right here. Right here. Mental muscle, you know where it happens? Not physical. That's the connection between you and Allah. You want to dominate this world? Build that. That's all psychological. When your principles are intact and your emotions are intact, my God, what happens? Your intention becomes like a mountain. It can't be moved. Move me off the stage now. Try. I used to run away. But now move me. Try to move me. You can't. Try to erase the Prophet's name, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Try. You can't. Why? Principle. That's how it works. So I just wanted to give you just a little bit of background in terms of what I do. But if there's any comments, concerns, anything that anybody wants to say, please say it. Please. Go ahead. I just, just looking at this diagram and uh, along the lines of the things you're saying, I would draw it a little different if you would allow me. Absolutely. So, between myself and all the three bottom ones, I would actually put God there in between. In between them. In the sense that you can build a healthy relationship with other people. You should. I mean, you mentioned that. Yes. You're saying the healthiest relationship with other people is through God. Yes. The healthiest relationship with your phone is through God. Hassan. The healthiest relationship with nature is through God. They're not mutually exclusive. You should just try to channel it the right way. So I would draw myself, God next, and from God I would bring give nature, other people, and phone. I love what you're saying. And see the arrows, how they're going back and forth? Right, between those two. So yes. Kind of... But see, all, all of them, they're always going back and forth. Those channels are always there. Just to point out a hierarchy. But I love what you're saying. I, it, this is, for me, is excellent. You need to put your ideas out there so other people can check them. It's, to me, it's beautiful. Thank you for the comment. Anybody want to elaborate? Questions? Anybody have anything that they want to say? Or just, we break for the food. Food, food, food. All right. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad.